Well, hey guys, welcome back to the bench. I have a PAM8610 board to take a look at, review and test. Now, I have reviewed one of these before, but it, it was different. This board is absolutely tiny. I mean, rated at 15 watts per channel. This board is tiny. And I will pop it out of the bag here momentarily and we'll take a look at that. The other board I reviewed of the 8610 had a, you know, jacks, a little volume control. But this is just a plain board with connectors if you don't need those. A lot of times you can just use the volume control on the music player or computer or whatever that you connect to the board. So you don't need all that. And, you know, that makes the board really, really small without all those extra components. Full disclosure, I did get this board for free. I was contacted by Ron of Invistiamall.com, and he asked if I would review the board. And I said, sure, but only under the condition that I call it as I see it. If it's no good, then it's no good. If it's good then I'll give it a favorable rating. And I said, well, go ahead and send it. I'll take a look at it. And I'll give a shout out to your, you know, your website or whatever. And, you know, at this point I would say, yeah, I am, if you want me to review a product, I'm open for doing that. It sure beats going out and paying for these things myself and reviewing them. I mean, they got to be related to what my channel's all about, of course. But yeah, if you have a product like one of these amp boards, you know, something I've not reviewed before, sure, I'd I'd be open for doing that. I did go to Invistia Mall site and take a look what they had. There were some things I wanted anyway. I was going to buy them on eBay and I went ahead and, you know, I paid for these with my own money. You know, I got ultrasonic rangefinder thing and uh, one of these infrared motion sensors. Some heat sinks. I think this heat sink goes with the, the chip because I didn't order this separately. So I'll attach that to the amplifier board. I paid all that other stuff with my own money. He did send me these LEDs for free and I will review them in another video. Okay, so this is my shout out to the Invistia Mall site. Here are the products they carry. $3 flat rate shipping. You buy one thing, you buy a hundred, it's all the same price. And they appear to have very good prices. Here's some of the items they have. I'm told they're adding more things as they go along. They're just starting out, I guess. Um, let's see. Here's the audio stereo boards. Uh, here's the 8610 board we're looking at today. So they have a, a few things there, not a lot, but most of the other um, categories they have more things. You know, sensors and detectors. So there you go, yeah, just a shout out to Invistia Mall. Okay, here is the board. That is quite small. The back, you can see the bias for thermal. This is all, looks like it's all ground planed on the back mostly. They do include these headers, these little pin headers. You can solder them in for connectors or just solder the wires in. I'll probably solder the wires in um, so I can connect them up easier. Here is the little heat sink I'll put on the chip. And, you know, it's, it's pretty small. It might help by dissipating an extra watt. 
but these this board is so small it's a, essentially has to act as a heat sink itself so yeah I'll, I'll get this attached as it will help somewhat okay it's all hooked up using the breadboard as a kind of a connection point put the little heat sink on there as you can see and going through the preamp from the music player let's see what it sounds like And of course, like I always say, you're hearing what my room sounds like and how mainly how this camera interprets the sound with its kind of crappy audio. But you know, if I didn't do a music clip, I'd really hear the complaints. It's kind of funny on YouTube, you'll hear somebody reviewing some high-end system and they have these fancy microphones set up in their fancy listening room to give you a sample of the sound. What do I hear? I just hear what the room acoustics sound like. So, you know, that's just the way it works out. So, it, it sounds pretty good to me. But like a lot of these little boards, you hear that hiss. For some reason, a lot of these Class D boards have a lot of background hiss. And when playing music, you'd, you know, that wouldn't be really noticeable unless you had high efficiency speakers that would pick that hiss out quite a bit. But with normal music, you won't hear it. One little problem I noticed, at low volume, you can... Sounds awful. Sounds distorted at low volumes. It could be, I don't know, it, it could be uh, some sort of oscillation beyond its normal switch mode frequency. I'll have to check that out. It could be something. I, I do have a capacitor here and it has its own um, bypass caps on the board. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but yeah, it could be a problem. Well, I tried a bunch of things. I adjusted the power supply voltage to see if that made any difference. Shorter speaker leads. Uh, supply bypass across the power supply leads right on the board. I just couldn't get rid of that distortion. I checked my music player and everything. I plugged that directly into my computer amplifier. Sounds perfectly smooth all the way down to you know very low volume so I decided to get this other PAM 8610 board that I reviewed previously see what that sounds like And yeah, it does have a little bit of grittiness at low volume. So it's something with these boards. This one is not as bad as this one. But something with these PAM8610 boards, or maybe it's just the chip itself. I don't know. I mean, you pr you'd never listen to music at such a low volume, but it's distortion that's there that shouldn't be. So, you know, I'm losing confidence in this PAM8610. Maybe it's not that great at all. I would think it would be a layout issue rather than the chip. I wouldn't think they'd put a chip out with a defect like that. 
Well, before somebody tries to say it's the way I've hooked it up, I've taken this board. It's a TPA 3110 I reviewed previously. Hooked it up the same way here. And perfectly clean at low volumes, less noise, less background hiss I should say. This one works fine. It's definitely those PAM8610 boards. But anyway, we'll carry on with the power test. Okay, I have the tiny PAM8610 board hooked back up. This is a filterless design, so I have to hook up these filters and capacitors to get rid of the switch mode so we can just see the pure um, sine wave output. Both channels driven, 8 ohm loads, 12.6 volts. We're getting 6.75 volts output and we'll do the math real quick of course we got the glare 6.75 squared divide that by 8 ohms and getting about 5.7 watts of output as far as distortion, distortion's not really bad at high power. This here is my 1% reference marker that's put into the signal. So these here would be actual distortion, which is quite low. You know, less than half a percent. So not bad at all. It draws only 26 milliamps standby. And I measured that with the meter, and this one just shows, can only show down to 30 milliamps. But when I turn the signal back on, this is full pre-clipping power. Both channels driven 8 ohm loads at 12.6 volts. So it's drawing about 1.36 or so amps. Okay, well... I did touch this thing and it is very hot. You really can't use this with 4 ohm loads at 12.6 volts. You can probably get away with it at 9 volts. So I'll try 9 volts, maybe 10 volts, and we'll see the output power with 4 ohm loads. And at 9 volts, 4 ohm loads, we got 3.9 watts, just shy of 4. So to wrap it up, 26 milliamps quiescent current, 5.7 watts, 12.6 volts supply with 8 ohm loads, and again about 4 watts, 9 volts with 4 ohm loads, both channels driven. Of course that's clean power before clipping. And I forgot to mention this, this came with the packaging, Invistia Mall does give you a little description sheet, operation, and hookup. I added a few things there. I always recommend having a capacitor near to the amplifier on the power supply rails. And a lot of people complain that they get noise with these little amplifiers from the inputs. I would recommend connecting a couple resistors across the inputs. In this case you can use 2.2K and that should help reduce the noise. Okay to wrap this video up of the mini PAM8610 board it does give you a decent amount of power. Of course I measure both channels driven before any sort of clipping distortion. But it, you know, it's a little bit shy of the rating. You know, 15 watts is a far cry from that. 
it just gets too hot to run it at 4 ohm load so you're you know that's what's keeping us back from getting a higher power rating even though we put the little heat sink on there it just gets too hot to touch doing the test with 8 ohm loads so there's no way I'd put 4 ohm loads on it well the drawback is it does have hiss a lot of these class D amps seem to have some background hiss this one has a little bit more than normal I would say and it does have that low power distortion issue I'm gonna to have to try some other PAM 8610 boards because both of mine seem to do it to varying degrees so I don't know what the issue is my other boards like I tried in the video, at least that one didn't do it. I'm pretty sure my other ones don't do it as well. So because of that, I can't really recommend this board. Is this a bad thing on Invistia Mall? No, I mean, I'm sure they don't test the amplifiers, you know, to this degree that I do. And, you know, the other stuff they sent me seems to work pretty good. I really like those IR modules. I have one in use. And it's, you know, it's doing the business. So I'm happy with Invistium all. I'm just, you know, have issues with this board. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.